Well, started playing uh, at Kids Grove Grammar School at the age of, I would say, 11 and a half. Uh, and uh, seemed to take off quite well on an old uh, beaten up uh, trumpet cornet uh, with a band on it, a little bit like a mini Dizzy Gillespie uh, horn and uh, seemed to take off uh, and um, I kind of never looked back. My mate, uh, God rest him, uh, was playing tuba, but he, he packed it up for football and trying to, because I was playing football as well, and uh, he tried to uh, uh, get me out of the playing, but no, I just stuck to it. I thought it was great. And uh, here I am. <laughs> I thank the Lord. After maybe five or six months of playing, uh, I went into the road road band uh, at, at Road Heath, uh, which I'm thankful they're still still uh, performing. And uh, so I would be learning all the time, you know, on the old, uh, a lot of the old uh, marches and things and little cadenzas in the, uh, in the pieces and uh, and then uh, uh, oh 19 what we are now 1960 uh, what was 61 62 round 62 62 to 63 uh, they recruited me into uh, what we call Ted's band you know Teddy Gre uh, Greenway Moor the Greenway Moor band and uh, not long uh, for me, but I went on to bumper up uh, with the band. That took me through to, um, what were we on, 63, 64, I had a classical phase, went through a, and passed for the Royal College, uh, Cecil Kidd, Professor Cecil Kidd for the audition, and, uh, uh, but that didn't last long. I was still, got brass banded, I was, it was oozing out. Didn't want the trumpet. And uh, uh, um, went from there and uh, applied for a, an apprenticeship for Foden's. Uh, and uh, I've got a little story there about Greenway Moor, if I may. At school, we used to rush dinner down and go into the music room. There wasn't really, not like this, nothing... It was just desk. I think it was the geography room that we used, and it doubled as the music. So we used to find a desk and play. Anyway, cutting long story short, Teddy Gray uh, brought me a piece when I'd gone into uh, Greenway Moor, Diadem of Gold, which I think I've still got somewhere. Uh, and uh, I hammered this piece. You know, you get a piece, you like it, and you... A lot of triplets. And um, there's one, one particular part in it. I couldn't... Anyway, we used to pick Teddy up. I used to travel with a guy named Georgie Beach who used to pick up, he used to pick me up, go over Teddy, a lad at Congleton, Martin Steele. And uh, it was one Sunday morning, was Sunday morning up at Biddlethmore, rehearsal, uh, the, the school room, Sunday school. And um, he said, how are you getting on with that? And I uh, said, well, I'm struggling a bit, Ted. And uh, anyway, people were dispersing. They were getting on the way. And uh, he said, give us your corny, because it was the same, same mouthpiece, you know, cosy cup one and a half. We'd all got them, you know. <laughs> and uh, he, because uh, he always on the side, on that side. And uh, I, he just rattled it off. It was just like... Right the way through, yeah, I've been shot out of it. And he says, "Is that any help?" I said, "Sure is." I said, "I'll get back to the grindstone then with that." Anyway, from uh, from that, we did contests. Of course, we were a good contesting band, uh, concert band, um, and then uh, uh, in August, August '65, I was 15, went to Foden's and uh, started work at Foden's 
in the office. I was an office lad and all that. And um, and then Rex Mortimer called me up. He said, uh, can you do your audition for the band? And uh, he took me down the band room and uh, did the audition. And uh, so that's fine. And the, the piece was... Ta -da! And that was my first. I played that through, and some. I prepared a piece. Daddy helped me with it. Carnival Venice, Arban, and did a bit out of, you know, different movement. Anyway, that was that was it. Said fine, and then uh, into the band, which was a dream. When. Uh, <clears throat> When I joined the band, I went on to the back row with uh, Doug Connolly, God rest him, and Mike Davies. And uh, so the, that, that would last then. Uh, took me through to maybe three, three months, four months. I can't actually remember the exact date. It's, it's difficult. I've not got it written down. And uh, and then of course uh, Jimmy, Jimmy uh, left from being bumper up, and I was offered the position, which was like winning the lottery, I think, or even better. For me, coming up, you know, was I was eating and sleeping it, and uh, so and uh, th then yeah, just bu bumping up, and uh, of course Teddy. Never heard him split a note in nearly five years. And uh, I think I've still got the uh, the bruise, little bruise, from his left elbow. You take the tasties, the tasty bits, and then, you know. Famous one to remember for that was uh, the Ray Raymond Overture. Uh, when we get the uh, semis, he comes in. So where's to come in? Bar a bar. And back again, you know. And uh, so he worked me quite hard, but uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly thank him from the bottom of my heart for it. Yet yeah, uh, memorable, memorable performance. Uh, Clusters maybe highlight uh, as a kid at the time, just turned 16, going down to uh, EMI Studios uh, to do the Sousa, Sousa 13, Sousa Marches. And uh, we've got Nori Paramore, God rest him, uh, sorting out, remember him sorting the drums out, the three drummers, men, men of brass. Uh, with the stereo, and you listen to it, you're know, going dated now, isn't it? But you know, you got dum dum dum, and you could really hear it how he'd done it, and uh, uh, it was just the heavens had opened, couldn't believe it. And they actually spoke to Matt Munro, so that was like uh, talk about an added bonus. Uh, and uh, going in, in that year. In that year, if it, I know I'm going to the end of October of that year, there was the, the, gig, the, the gigs, the, the jobs, I should say, shouldn't I, uh, were uh, just out of this world, really. You know, I know we get, like, good and bad and with everything, but mainly, you know, uh, they were great. But coming to October, uh, one major highlight was playing right up the top, which we had to get to, in Westminster Abbey. It was just like, you're pushing yourself back from the... Uh, A1, you know. And of course, it was a good year, 66. We got the cup, didn't we? <laughs> and, uh, but I've had, I can, they're just too, too numerous to, to, to even try and mention, you know, the, the, the quality of the, the, the jobs. Um, and, and of course going to uh, I always used to like it at Milton Hall in Manchester uh, Oxford Road for the breakfast specials because used to get like uh, Judith Chalmers she'd be sitting at the desk 
and you got this big coughing mic. You know, you've, you've seen them with the... And uh, when the red light went on and the adrenaline kicks in for the opening march and uh, Cossack or something, and uh, whatever, Foden's March, that is, because it's still, it is still Foden's March, I believe. Uh, yeah, things like, I could go, oh, you'd be unbelievable. You could go on. Oh, oh yes. favourite venue. I used to like the uh, Civic Hall at Wolverhampton on the Men of Brass. Used to feel, you know, kind of proud. Oh, and one, oh, one, one, we did the three trumpeters in, on a record. I can't remember the record, but we did the three trumpeters um, in Foden's Canteen. The, uh, the guys came down, you know. And Harry, I was just, uh, Harry was, Harry Mortimer, of course. D directing operations, and he came up after said, "That was, that'll do." Because he was a well, top man himself, you know. I like, um, I do like Lorenzo. Because it has um, a little bit of magic for me. Because as a kid at fourteen, I sat through the whole lot of bands in the King's Hall, Bellevue, for the uh, the Open, British Open. And uh, I think Foden's were placed somewhere, I could just definitely don't know, in the middle somewhere, maybe 12th, something like that. And uh, it wasn't that, it was something else. But uh, when it comes to the solo, the, the cornet solo in the middle, do -de -de. As soon as he heard it in plate, Teddy, poof, welled up inside, you know. I thought, because I'd heard all the others, I mean, yeah, we, uh, Derek Garside, uh, Norman Ashcroft, smashing players, but that sound as he used to produce, that unsickly, sweet sound with feeling was just, for me, El Numero Uno. It was, it was the tops. It really was. And, uh, and of course they won it, 64, yeah. So I was chuffed to death. Mind you, I'd have been better if I'd have been in the band. <laughs> but uh, that was, in, of course, 65. So uh, I have to like that. Uh, Symphony and March, there's loads, lots of uh, test pieces. Lots and lots. Gilbert Vinter, what a, what a writer, you know, just superb. Right, I left Foden's. It would be late 70, early 71. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, and very soon after, well, I did a little bit with a trio. Me and my uncle had a trio, and we, we actually played, you know, in the village halls, at the local village halls. And uh, But I got uh, my first professional job on trumpet at uh, summer season at uh, Patheli. Did a few, few of those. Well, and then, then basically, I uh, left brass banding behind, and then went uh, into uh, trumpet playing uh, theatre. The regent I did the regent for the best part of ten years on the pantomimes, which was great. It was great. Met quite a lot of stars, you know, and uh, whatnot. And um, uh, I've never looked back really uh, until the COVID. Covid uh, crashed in. Uh, my last job was at the Victoria Hall with the big choir, and uh, that was February two oh two oh. But I've been practicing. I've carried on practicing. It's got to stay that has, because there's loads I can't do. I could do with some lessons at. <laughs> was that all right? Oh, yes. I got nervous, you know. I got very nervous. No, you did. Oh, okay. Fantastic. But you have to cur curb them, don't you? The nerves. You've got to have yeah, your own. I'm still trying to find out how to do it. <laughs> you get, yeah, it never happens, does it? No. It depends on the gig. It depends on what it is, where it is. Yeah. It can be... I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to remember the... It's not not running now, is it? No. 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 Oh, I remember... Uh, I can't think of his name. The tenor horn player at uh, Wingate's. 
We used to do a man of brass with Wingate and uh, Brighouse, was it? Brighouse and Wingate. And um, he used to... I, I, was just, I think he... Gordon... It was Gordon so, some, something. Gordon Higginbottom. Gordon Higginbottom. Oh, yeah. That's just what, what happens. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he used to come round. The schools came to Shabington when I was teaching at Shabington and uh, uh, sorted the kids, Tetherington School, yeah. uh, with the dia diaphragm leaning forward and lifting yourself up, you know, when you're breathing. And, uh, but he used to have, I think it was a teddy bear. He used to have a teddy bear in the audience somewhere. And uh, used to focus. Yeah. That'll do. Take your mind off it. Yeah. And so, well, well it's something. I conducted my, I used to play Walkden Band, and he was my conductor. Walkden, right. That's how I knew Gordon him. Gordon Eggingbottom, yeah. He's still alive, he's on, on Facebook. He always posts <laughs> right. videos of. Very fine of player. Jim, yeah, well, I knew Jimmy quite well, because yeah. when I went, I did go into the, uh, I missed that really, but it doesn't matter, National Youth Brass Band of Great yeah, Britain. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy was the coach. Right. What a gr smashing guy. Yeah. Yeah. They, they all, Phil McCann, we used to play table tennis at. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've done, I know he's still, I know he's still about and still yeah, going, which I'm really, I'm really pleased about. And, yeah. uh, but like I say, I lost touch with Brass Bandit. Yeah. And uh, not because I don't like Brass Bandit. Still, the, your career took you elsewhere? I just, yeah, I just wanted to. Because I've got a, a gift, <laughs> if you can call it a gift. Oh, that was another story, uh, which I couldn't put put in really, but we were on a man of brass job. And uh, of course I was, was getting into me jazz then really. And uh, improvisation I was going to say, yeah. you know, but whatever. Go do gigs, they booked me for it, you know, on gigs and they, no dots, don't bother. What we're doing, what key, yeah, it's all right. Whatever. And uh, um, <coughs> you'd, uh, I've got I've lost where I was now. <laughs> oh yes, I'm doing man of brass job. Yeah. This is the important thing. I, I'm doing something like, I don't know, I was maybe working on uh, a piece, I don't know what it was. And he come over, Teddy, he said, if I have it, is it running? Oh no. If I ever catch you playing that crap again, he said, you're for it, yeah. and wandered off. And he always used to, do you know how he used to, to, to uh, warm up? He always just, in the stave, see. <laughs> Come on then, that's it. That was it. Never split a note. Never split a note. He was a hero. A I suppose he was a machine, yeah. yeah. He was a lovely guy, though. And uh, uh, I still miss him. Yeah. Still miss him. He was 82 when he died, of course. And uh, it's still difficult with some to, to imagine that they're not here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Just can't believe it. Like Walt Illingworth. Some of the... St I mean... We, when we were playing, practicing at the Midlands, oh, that was another story, of course, of me. But that was uh, the the old Foden band room, uh, opposite the foundry, which it's not nothing's there now. Yeah. And uh, we'd done eighteen. Tw we had actually practiced. I think it was a man of brass job. Eighteen, yeah, it would be. We just reserve them in eighteen to just bang them out. And uh, we'd actually just about half an hour after we'd left. There, it collapsed. That if we'd have been in, I don't know what 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 would have happened. But yeah. they built that was it, and we they moved it to the Midland Hotel. They weren't serving drinks like it, and uh, and uh, Mr. Ted, Mr. Ted Foden, was uh, always used to turn up. Used to be sitting there, lovely. He was absolutely he had a Studebaker. He was a lovely lovely guy. Uh, Mr. Ted, and uh, and then Harry would be sometimes, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was another funny story. Uh, when we turned up at EMI, fairy band were there, the, band, the bus. We rolled up, I don't know how long they'd been, not long. We hadn't been there, oh, 
three, four minutes, Morris Motors, it was Morris Motors then, pulled in behind us. The next thing, Harry comes out to greet us, and he must have just had, he's just had his hair done, a blue rinse he'd had. Can you, can, can you possibly, and it was, it was really blue. Quiz some of you on that, that uh, and of course the buses were rocking, you know. It was just, because yeah. he used to walk like that, he used to have a bit of a, <laughs> yeah, just a little, and, uh, but he used to p appear at the at the band room yeah. uh, quite often, whether it was a payout or not, I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah, they were good days and I, f I really, really, uh, I, money couldn't have bought it. And sitting there like that, money, because it made me work. And when I played, it got to be right. Yeah. And he cracks, when he, no good. Yeah. He'd been out, wouldn't he?